whatever instruction we hear today, help us through the week ahead. And those that give today, may that bless you all and bless others. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. partner with us 
And so this is God's work, and we're going to let God do His thing. We're just going to go along for the ride and see how God's going to take care of us. So Amen. praise the Lord. So I just want to tell you, thank you, thank you, thank you ahead of time for the people's lives that have been changed uh, because of what you do. Don't give up. Just because you may not see it right now, you will see it eventually when we get to heaven. So keep on keeping on. Jesus is coming back for us. Again, also I mentioned that this morning that in Iceland right now, that this last week, we have over a thousand uh, earthquakes happen in that country. Wow. The roads are buckling and the magma from the volcanoes are coming up. And they're afraid that when that thing goes, basically you may lose a whole country. And so pray for the country of Iceland. I've never, I've never met any missionaries or heard any missionaries going there, but there are people there that need to know about Jesus Christ. I have a friend that works in the United Nations that goes there, but last time I talked to her, she says, I, we work for the state, but I've never met an individual missionary that has established any churches in Iceland. So pray for that country that people will know about Jesus Christ. So definitely pray you never know what God's going to do. So let's all stand once again. Number 488. Hymn number 488. I will sing of my Redeemer.
content. That's the tough thing, to be content with things, isn't it? <coughs> when the world says, I need more, it's not good enough. I need bigger, better, faster, stronger. I need all that. And then when you get it all, it's not good enough because it has changed. He says in verse 12, I know both how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed. Are you listening to the teacher? Both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. We need to take the word can't out of our vocabulary because it says we can, not by ourselves. Because there's sometimes we feel completely inadequate. Or feel like a failure. Or feel like, why am I in this mess? I wish I would have made better and different choices. And then instead of trying to get out of the hole that we're in, we beat ourselves up and dig that hole deeper and deeper and deeper. And we get more discouraged. And we go through despair. We get to uh, despondency. And then it just gets depression. And all those different things because we're trying to do it ourselves. The key is... I can do all things through Christ. Strengthens me. Let's go to order prayer, and then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Father, we love you this morning. Lord Jesus, you're an amazing God. And God, it just amazes me every time we come to this day regarding Christmas shoebox. No matter how many we have, Lord, you've always seen to meet the needs. It didn't matter what the size of the church was. It didn't matter with the financial condition of the people. It didn't matter regarding the circumstances of our society. None of that mattered. Because you own the cattle of the thousand hills. You own what's above it. You own what's underneath it. And by you, all things consist. And so, Father, we know that there's a lot of struggles people are dealing with. And anxiety and things that people are dealing with. A lot of stress. So Father, this morning, help us to have open eyes and open ears to hear what thus say the Lord has to say. And Father, this is a whole different type of uh, approach regarding this. Because Lord, we don't want to hear what the world has to say. We want to hear what you have to say. So that Jim Fryer sit down and let Jesus Christ take over. Lord, I ask that the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be truly acceptable unto you. Guide our steps today. And Lord, may we be able to say it's been good to be in the house of God. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now let's look at 2 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 11. times he was beaten with the cat and nine tails thirty-nine times. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, and night the day I've been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. And weariness and painfulness, and watchings often, and hunger and thirst, and fastings often, and cold and nakedness, besides those things that, that are without. He's saying, I went through a lot of stuff on the outside. I dealt with a lot of stuff. But that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the church. But not only was he worried about the physical problem that he's dealing with, but internally, he said, also I'm dealing with the different churches I help establish. And here what's going on with them and the struggles that they're going through. Can I say this? That since the church has been established, and we talk about the, 
the church that Jesus established and individual bodies of believers throughout the time of Jesus' resurrection, I mean, his ascension to heaven until now, there have been times when the churches have had struggles. <laughs> They've had times of leanness. They've had times of prosperity. They've had times of blessings. They've had times of persecutions. <laughs> Thank God right now, we are, we are safe as far as some of the things that our government is providing and, and talking about. They are in the process right now of trying to remove the church's uh, tax exemption. And then, in those bills, going back to the inception of the churches, from the inception of the churches, all the way to, to pay back taxes. Can you imagine 51 years of taxes that they would exact upon us? Thank God we have tax exemption right now. What would it do financially? It would, just, it would make it the church. What would we do? We'd still meet. Because the work of God is not based upon a building. It's not based upon money. It's based upon who Jesus is. Right, yeah. Amen. Right. It's kind of like when we had that outside churches. I think we ought to have an outside church one day. <laughs> I love to hear the, home, the, the horns honking. <laughs> and I love to know to see the people riding their bicycles and stopping and listening to us sing. I love to watch the people drive and slow down and stop and watch you as a church be getting out of your cars and fellowshipping outside this building. I love that. Will we have to go to that? We may have to. But the fact is this. The church is established on Jesus Christ and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. Yes. It, may, it may try to shut a building down, but it's not going to stop the work of God. Because we have a captain that's never lost a battle. That's right. Amen. And he will continue to win all the way throughout the end of time. Yes. And yet in the midst of all the problems, and Paul is right, he says, man, I've had some situations happen. I have been beaten 39 times, 5 times. I have been beaten with, with surprise. I have been stoned. I have been, I have been shipwrecked. I have been I'm basically floating on wood in the water overnight. I have dealt with uh, being stalked by people to rob me. I've been let down on a basket outside of, a, out of, outside of a city because they wanted to kill me. I've had problems. I would say he would be a lot of trauma that he would be dealing with. We live in a day to day where we may not have those type of traumatic events, but each one of us has some type of trauma that we go through. And then that trauma is more than just physical, it is mental. It's that we think about it and dwell on it and dwell on it. And how do you deal with it? I had a lady that came to our house, she was a state worker, and she said, you need to get rid of all those things out of, out of your house about Lucinda. You need to move on. Mm -hmm. I was quite reserved. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, you need to throw that bum out of your house. <laughs> I did say, how in the world am I supposed to remove 36 years of her life and my life? Didn't know what to say, but you just, you just take 10 things every day and be freer. Why do I want to be free? I wasn't in slavery anyway. No. Traumatic, and I've talked about that. People said, well, don't you think you need to move on? Well, what's the difference? What's the definition of you of moving on? Having to see someone that you love pass away is very dramatic. Mm -hmm. yes, it is. And, it, and it works on your mind. And whatever things that you have gone through, it's traumatic. And yet, how does God say, okay, let's get beyond the cycle battle out there. Let's just see what God has to say about how to deal with this. Paul says, I've gone through all these things, and the thing that bothered me the most was that I was worried about my churches. The things that were near and dear to my heart. So how do we deal with this? First, we understand that experiences prepare us for the duties of life. Look at Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Verse 25 says this. <laughs> I have been young, 
and our own. Yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor seen begging bread. Why? He is ever merciful and lendeth, and the seed is blessed. You see, how do we get victory over anxiety? We understand is that the experiences that we have gone through of the past prepare us how to deal with things today. See, life is cyclical. It just basically goes through cycles. You're going to have the good days. You're going to have the bad days. You have the days where you're going to say, man, hello, Lord, we're going to attack it. And then the other days, you're going to want to put your blanket over here and say, Lord, can we fast forward to another day? I don't want to even go outside today. How do you deal with all that stuff? Every day is full of problems. Every day are, are involving challenges. But God says, I, I put things in your past to get you prepared for what you deal with in your future. Look at uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Look at verse 16 says this. I commune with mine own heart. Now this is Solomon writing it. Uh, Solomon was the wisest man that's ever lived. Um, he was the richest man that ever lived. And um, he did well when he wrote the book of Proverbs. But then after he had all these different influences on him, uh, it caused him to change his heart away from God. That's why he writes the book of Ecclesiastes. And when he's at the end of his life and all these different promises, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. That's what life is all about. But it says in verse 16, says this. I commune with my own heart, saying, Lo, I have come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And I gave my heart to know not wisdom, and to know madness and folly, and perceived that this is all vexation of spirit. So, um, experiences prepare us for the duties of life. First of all, think about this. God prepared Israel to learn how to sympathize with strangers. Look at Exodus 23, Exodus chapter 23. When you talk about the stranger, we talk about the non-Jew. It says in verse 9, Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for you know the heart of a stranger, seeing you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You see, they prepared Israel going forward to remind them, hey, don't forget where you've come from. Remember how you were treated in, in Egypt? Remember how they abused you and mistreated you and don't forget that. See, life is a, is, a, is a story. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, we spend our lives in the tale that is told. We're coming back from the, the graveside, Brother Larry's um, graveside service. And I was talking to a lady that was driving the hearse. And uh, she said, what do you do to kind of bring you back into the thoughts of ministry? I said, I go to gravesides. That's kind of creepy. No, it's not. What I do is I walk. I look at the dates. I look at the, the, the times. In fact, right around from Brother Larry's gravesite, there was a baby that was only born for two days. The shortness of life. And I also like to know about the people that, that are known for the area where they're, and different things like that. And she says, what brings you back to, to earth? I said, everybody has a birthday. Everybody's going to have a death day. But what is the mystery is the dash in between. That's the tale that is told. Every day we marks another chapter in our lives that we write. Some good, some bad, some comedic, and some horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever genre it is, we go through those different times, don't we? And God says, remember, in the previous chapters, this is what you had. Go back and remember those things and realize what you did to get out of that to get you in a better position where you're at right now. Don't go backwards. Move forwards. 
And God was telling the nation of Israel, hey, quit complaining. Remember, you got you yourself into it. And then for 400 years, you begged to be taken out of it. You see, the parent of Israel to sympathize with strangers. And also prepared the demoniac to learn how to witness. Look at Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5. Look at verses 15 through 19 says this. And they came to, and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and at his right mind and they were afraid. Isn't it amazing what Jesus can do when he gets a hold of people's hearts? He can change them up and it says that he was in his own right mind. Before that, he was running around naked and in the hills and scaring people and cutting themselves and screaming and scaring people because he was possessed. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Now this guy says, look, you changed my life. My mind is clear. I know what I want to do. I'm thankful I'm not oppressed. I'm thankful that I got these, these cuts. They'll heal. Yes, there'll be scars. And yes, I'm thankful that I feel much better right now. Jesus could have said, yeah, come on the boat, let's go. But look what it says. How be it, Jesus, suffer him not, but say unto him, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee and had compassion on thee. You see, the greatest witness is someone that God has changed their lives. Go home to your friends because... He knew that when he went back to his friends, they said, what's wrong? You're not cutting yourself anymore. You're not wild and out of control. And here's the thing. What changed your life? God can take the negative and turn it to a positive if we're willing to obey what he tells us to do. You know, it doesn't make any sense. The maniac was, was able to be better prepared because of that. But also, look at John chapter 9, John chapter 9. Look at verse 25, says this. It's a story about a man that was blind. And his parents wanted nothing to do with the fact that his son was healed because they were afraid of being kicked out of the temple. But it says in John chapter 9, verse 25, they asked him. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. See, this traumatic event of being blind and then being healed qualified him to testify about the goodness of God. His own parents said, uh uh, uh he's on his own. Our hands are clear because we don't want to deal with religious persecution. He's of age, let him speak. He says, I have no idea about the guy. All I know is that I can see now. So the aspect about trauma is that you don't have to live in that all the time. It's a stepping stone to greater opportunities of witness. Say, I don't know about this one. Say, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We'll go to verse 4 in a moment. But I want us to go to verse 8. This is Paul, a super Christian. The man that was mighty wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. The man was mighty in his speaking, mighty in his witness, and he was a mighty man of God. Now look at verse 8. It says this. For we would not, brethren, have, have, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we are pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despair even of life. 
we have the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raised the dead. This mighty man of God that, that is kryptonite, persecution, defiance, that he even got to the point of saying, Lord, I'm done. Take me out of this world. I want to die. And may I say, I know a lot of Christians that have, that have told me that, confessed that. That they were so far down in the valley, they couldn't see their way out of it. It felt like no matter which way they were going, they were being attacked each way. And they didn't know what to do. They just felt like, Lord, just kill me and let me take care of myself. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Trauma. It's real. But how did Paul deal with it? Let's go back to verse 3 and 4. It says this. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comfort us all in all our tribulation. When you think about that trauma that you deal with, now, this Friday was Lucinda's birthday, and I did what I normally did for the last many years, is give her flowers and give her a card from Snoopy, and uh, we went out to eat for lunch and had a wonderful day. But then as I was driving the bus, I, as I got to the kids, I just got to thinking about Lucinda and thinking, man, I miss her. When I got back to the bus, I just sat in the bus for a little while. Had a good day, but I miss her. We all go through times like that. And when you deal with some people, they, they're the supers, but the one with the halos on the heads, just get over it. You can't get over that stuff. Because it's real. You can learn from it. You can get comfort from it. But it's like an open wound. It may heal, but you're always going to have an evidence of that to remind you. First thing, he was comforted by God. Now here's the second part of, the, of how he dealt with this. That we may be able to comfort them which are in each other. How in the world can I help anybody when I can't help myself? This is how you do it. By the comfort we're with yourselves are comforting God. Your life is a living ministry to touch people based upon the uniqueness of the problems that you've gone through. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. And how do you comfort them? You go to them and say, you know what? This is how I felt when I went through the same thing you're going through. Because when people are going through problems, they feel isolated. They feel like no one understands, no one even cares. When they find someone, they hear someone say, you know what? I would do that. This is how I dealt with it. Whether it's right or wrong, this is how I dealt with it. And when people understand that they're not the only one dealing with that, that opens up an opportunity to, first of all, that person you're talking to and minister to them because they're not alone in that, but also minister you thinking, you know what? As tough as what that situation was, I can be able to at least feel like my life has value because now I can share that loved one or that situation with someone else. It's those fingerprints that God has touched your life with. And yes, he got the point says, Lord, God, just kill me. I'm done. It was comforted by God and by the other people that were dealing with the same type of persecution. But also look at 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Look at verse 16. It says this. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And here's the key. But were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Can I tell you that by learning what God has for you with every traumatic situation you're going through, it empowers you 
and gives you confidence to share about God. I've talked to people now, past March the 1st, that for the previous 19 years they would talk to me about a lot of different things. Why? Because they found out about Lucinda. The one thing I like is, like, how you doing? You doing okay. What does that mean? When they say that, it opens up a door. <laughs> well, sometimes I have my bad days. Sometimes I miss her dearly. Sometimes I feel like my whole right arm has been cut off. But there's sometimes that God says, you know what? First of all, she's okay. That's right. So don't worry about her. She's okay. She's in my care. Mm -hmm. But secondly, I'm with you. And thirdly, I'm going to come get you soon. Amen. You just keep doing what you're doing and let me take care of the rest. I can do all things through Christ's strength. Even if it's to share something that hurts. Is it okay to cry? Absolutely. I've shed lots of tears. And there's nothing wrong with that. Is it okay to feel like inadequate? Absolutely. It's okay because we're human. But understand this. Whatever inadequacies we have, God fills in the gaps. Because we do all things through Christ. Which faith is this? And that's what the confidence comes in. That's how we get through a traumatic situation. It's not easy. That's why as brothers and sisters in Christ, we should be supportive and encouraging as much as possible. And don't allow the devil to say, you need to pull away from everybody. That's the way to handle it. That's the worst thing to do. I'll end with this. When I was six, seven years old on Sunday nights, if I was good, I got a chance to watch Ronald Perkins, Wild Kingdom. By the way, Mr. Perkins is from Pittsburgh, Kansas. With the Lakeside Elementary. Which is Pittsburgh High School. And I can always remember watching the lions. And he would whisper like he was right there. Look at how the lion is preparing itself. As it cracks from the love. Look at the gazelle. Has no care in the world. And all of a sudden, Like he was born in the gazelle, but through the television. <laughs> May I say that the experiences that you go through, you may feel it doesn't matter, but it matters to the people that you talk to. Let God take care of the rest. You just be that channel that God can us through. Your life is important, your life is special. You are a workmanship created by Jesus Christ. God don't make junk. He doesn't make failures. So don't allow yourself or anybody else to tell you that. Because they're wrong. Because you belong to God. Will you have more trauma? Probably. You take the steps. Say, you know what? Yeah, I've dealt with that. I've dealt with that. I still deal with this. And sometimes those things in the past come up. I'm going to be a little bit better. Because I know a little bit what to expect. Because I know that God says I will never leave you nor forsake you. And you are special to God. Let's go to the Lord. With that down, nice, close Christians pray. Let me ask just a couple of questions. First question is a pastor. I know that I know that I'm on my way to heaven. I'm more again because I see you as a testimony. The Bible says, if we need the Lord, say so. God bless you, you put your hands down. Second question, does a pastor, something, a message spoke to my heart. Would you please pray for me? Can I see you? I know my hands up. I need this this morning. You put your hands down. God bless you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. Then we're going to stand. If you need to use an old-fashioned altar, talk to the Lord. He is here. Talk to him. If this is you and God time, let him wrap his arms about you. Let him tell you that he loves you. Let him tell you that you're special. 
Let him love on me. This is you and God time. Let God's will be done. Father, we love you this morning. You're amazing God. Lord, whatever problems that we're going through, Lord, we know that you can help us through those things. Sometimes we have no idea how to get there, but you do. Help us, Lord, to just learn to lean on you and just follow your example. Father, bless each one that's in this place. Just let them know you love them. Let them be assured of that. So this way they walk out this place and have some encouragement. Lord, bless this invitation. And Lord, if someone did not be saved, may they be saved. But Lord, be pleased. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand with head down and eyes most Christians praying. We need to use an old-fashioned altar. It's here. Amen. 